All right, let's pick up some vocab terms for experimental design. So when we talk about a study, we usually break it into one of two categories, an observational study or an experiment. So a study is, an official, is officially an observational study if the investigator observes characteristics of a sample, ideally a random sample, from a population but does not impose a treatment. So this phrase will become important. I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just watching what you do, I'm observing. An experiment differs from an observational study in that the investigator deliberately imposes a treatment, and here ideally the treatments are randomly assigned to the subjects. So here I'm telling you what to do, okay? So study, experiment, not imposing a treatment, imposing a treatment. The most common observational study you've probably seen at this point is a survey. When you fill out surveys, nobody's telling you what to think, they're just getting your opinion. They're not imposing any kind of treatment. So if you're the investigator, you're going to identify one or more explanatory variables that we'll call X. Sometimes they're referred to as factors. Um, we're going to manipulate those. And then at least one response variable Y. And for our cases, we'll do one and one. Okay, so back in your math days, you called them X and Y, independent, dependent x, y, here we're going to call them explanatory and response. And there's some kind of variable, and again, I've been trying to get us already in the habit of starting your problem by asking what is the variable? What is our explanatory variable and what are we measuring at the end? All right, treatments are the different values or components of the explanatory variable applied in the experiment. An experimental unit is a single object or individual to be measured. Now, a cause and effect relationship in the stats world, a cause and effect relationship is only possible when we're running an experiment. All right, so you might hear that phrase, correlation is not causation. All right, so cause and effect, you have to be running an experiment. So when we do all of those surveys, those observational studies, we can't officially say it's a cause and effect relationship. That has to be done in an experiment. Okay, so the next vocab term, if the purpose of an experiment is to determine whether some treatment has an effect, it's important to include an experimental group does not, that does not receive the treatment, which we call the control group. All right? And there's times when the control group re receives uh, no treatment at all, and sometimes where it receives something called a placebo, and that's the next thing I'm going to define. So let me move this up. So if we're talking about a placebo, a placebo is something that is identical in appearance, taste, feel, everything to the treatment received by the treatment group, except that it contains no active ingredients. And typically we give the placebo to the control group. That's the most common version of experiments. Give the placebo to the control group, give the real treatment to the treatment group. Um, and the reason we have placebos is because humans more often than not subjects are subject to the placebo effect. Many patients respond favorable to any treatment, even a placebo, presumably because of the trust of the trust in the doctor and expectations of a cure. So just by, by me being a doctor and giving you a pill and telling you it's going to make you feel better, you're actually a little bit more likely to feel better even if it's nothing at all. You just feel better and that's called the placebo effect. So that's why we have a control group that gets a placebo, just to see what the placebo effect looks like in general, and then compare that placebo effect to the treatment group and see if our treatment is even better than the placebo effect. All right, for a single blind experiment, that is one in which the subjects do not know which treatment was received, but the individuals measuring the response do know which treatment was received, or it's an experiment in which the subjects do know which treatment was received, but the individuals measuring the response don't know what was received. So I think the most common version of a single blind test is when the subject doesn't know whether they receive the placebo or the treatment. So I give you a pill and I haven't told you, yes, this is the placebo or yes, this is the treatment. You're just taking this and you're assuming it's got some active ingredient in it, that it's, it's a treatment pill, but you don't know. So you might not know what you're getting, but I know what you're getting. So that would be an example of a single blind test um, in that direction. There's a different kind where you know what you're getting, but I don't know what you're getting uh, as the evaluator. So let's say I, um, maybe you've, you've done your flu shots before. So 
let, there are actually two versions of the flu shot, or at least there were a couple of years ago. Um, I, I remember one time I went to take it, they said I could either take a shot or I could do um, a nasal spray. So if I was the subject of that experiment, I would know if I was getting a flu shot or a flu nasal spray. But then let's say flu season passes and I go to check in with the person running the experiment. Hopefully the person running the experiment, or at least in this case, if we're doing a single blind experiment, while I would know if I received the shot or the nasal spray, the person evaluating me would not know if I received the shot or the nasal spray. So I would go and check in with some kind of nurse or doctor and say, yes, I got the flu or no, I didn't get the flu. But the person I'm telling this to wouldn't know which treatment I received. I have to know, because duh, I'm gonna know if I got a shot or I took an, or I shoved something up my nose. Um, if you can double blind, that's the best case scenario. This removes as much bias as humanly possible. So in a double blind experiment, that is one in which neither the subjects nor the individuals who measure the response know which treatment was received. So that would be the, the best case scenario. I, I couldn't double blind in that flu shot example, but let's say we were testing out a new aspirin. So you're the subject, right? Oops. All right, you are patient one. All right, and you were given a pill. Now you don't know if this pill was a treatment, was the actual new aspirin the treatment or it was the placebo. But you go to some kind of evaluator They've got their little note board. Okay, and you would tell them, yes, the pill helped me. Or no, the pill did not help me. And they would record that data point down. Now you wouldn't know if you had, like I said, you don't know if you had the treatment or the placebo and they don't know if you had the treatment or placebo. And sometimes folks are like, well then how does anybody know? Well, somebody off in the lab here, all right? Someone in the lab, they know that patient one had the placebo, all right? But this person doesn't know because they're the ones that are actually interacting with you. So there's no way for this person to bias your response because he or she just, they don't know if you had the treatment or placebo. They've got no, no, uh, no hidden bias in it because they don't know which way, like I said, they don't know if you got the treatment or the placebo. So you would just be honest with them. You say, okay, yes, it helped. No, it didn't. And they can't bias you and you can't bias you because you don't know which one you got. So um, that's a double blind experiment, but I don't want to conflate that with saying nobody knows. Somebody, some person over here, they knew patient one, I should put that they knew, lab tech. This is the lab tech that knew patient one got the placebo. All right, but this lab tech shouldn't, inter uh, shouldn't interact with the patient at all so that this patient can remain unbiased and then this evaluator can remain unbiased. So the evaluator will take all of his or her notes down and give it to the lab tech. All right, that's a double blind experiment. So we're gonna take all of this vocab, I know it's a lot, and we're gonna apply it to an example. All right, so researchers want to investigate whether taking aspirin regularly reduces the risk of heart attack. 400 men between the ages of 50 and 84 are recruited as participants. The men are divided randomly into two groups. One group will take the aspirin and the other group will take the placebo. Each man will take one pill each day for three years, but he does not know whether he's taking the aspirin or the placebo. At the end of the study, researchers count the number of men in each group who have had heart attacks. Identify the following values for this study. Population, sample, experimental units, explanatory variable, response variable, and treatments. Whew, okay, so let's take a look at all of this. Let's take a step back. Looks like we're gonna have 400 guys 400 men between 50 and 84, we're gonna split them into two groups. This group's gonna take a placebo for three years. This group's gonna take the actual aspirin for three years. 
And you can imagine that's a pretty big commitment. You're taking a pill for three years and you don't know if you've had the aspirin or the placebo. And, and then we're gonna see how you did at the end of this. Did you have a heart attack or not, right? That's what we wanna keep track of because that's ultimately the purpose of this, right? We wanna reduce the risk of our heart attack. And I see this, this phrase here, number of men in each group who have had heart attacks, right? So I wanna somehow keep track of that frequency. All right, so let's take a look at this. Who is my population of interest, all right? If I'm looking at who's in my sample, these are men between ages 50 and 84. Okay, so that's who I'm interested in when heart attack risk increases. So men between the ages of 50 and 84. And again, I didn't include any women in this group. I didn't include men under 50, so I can't generalize to anything but this group of men here, the ones between 50 and 84. My sample are my 400 men between the ages of 50 and 84. My experimental units, those are who will actually receive the treatment or the placebo. And in this case, it's the exact same, right? It's the 400 men. That's who I'm giving either the treatment or the placebo to. So I'm just gonna use a bunch of quote marks because I'm lazy. Sounds good. Okay. All right, so let's move this up. All right, so I wanna take a look at my response variable. What am I gonna keep track of at the end? So as we get to the end of this three years, what am I interested in? I'm interested in whether or not these guys had heart attacks. So you can imagine you've been taking this pill for three years, you go and see some sort of evaluator, they ask you a question, did you have a heart attack? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. That's what this experiment is, is revolving around. So, okay. Now, keep in mind, this is a categorical variable, right? And we'll just, we'll turn it into proportions. We'll get to that a little bit later. Like I said, good old chapter eight. Categorical variable, because you'll either tell me yes or no. And Back earlier on the problem, they said they're gonna keep track of the number of yeses, right? We're gonna keep a frequency count of the number of men in each group who have had heart attacks. So we're gonna turn that categorical variable into a proportion, but that's just something later on that we're gonna to get to. All right, so this is what I'm gonna keep track of at the end. What do I think explains whether or not the patient had a heart attack? So what am I asking these patients to do? I think daily aspirin. Potentially, if you take daily aspirin, hopefully that would reduce your risk of heart attack. I think I spelled this wrong twice, yeah. Aspirin, there we go, okay. Now the treatments for this explanatory variable, there are two of them. You can actually have the aspirin, I will spell it correctly, or you could have the placebo. And then there are a couple of questions I want us to answer. Is this an experiment, excuse me, is this an experiment or an observational study? Why or why not? So if we think back to the last, the last page, the difference between an experiment and an observational study was whether or not treatments were imposed. If treatments were imposed, then it was an experiment. If I let you choose which treatment you wanted to take, it was an observational study. And let's just pretend this was an observational study. The answer is experiment, but I wanna talk about why this would not work as an observational study. Can you imagine if you had 400 men and you let them just come in and you ask them, well, what would you like to take for three years, an aspirin or a placebo? Who's gonna pick the placebo? Nobody's gonna say, yeah, I wanna take a sugar pill for three years because it's not gonna do anything for me. Everyone's gonna to elect to take the aspirin. That's why you have to run this as an experiment and you have to give half the folks the aspirin and half the placebo. So for this question, this is an experiment and it's an experiment because treatments were imposed.
Or you could say treatments were randomly assigned. Okay. All right. And then we get to this question. Was this experiment single blind or double blind? Or if I read this, was single or double blinding involved? Now, we didn't have a ton of information as to what this was uh, in terms of single or double blinding, but I would hope and I've got to assume that it is at least single blind, meaning that at least the 400 men in our experiment don't know whether or not they were getting the aspirin or placebo. So it, it's at least single blind, all right, I really hope. So I'm gonna put this in here. I hope the experiment is at least single blind in that the patients don't know if they're receiving the aspirin or the placebo. My truest hope, well probably not my truest overall, but for this experiment, uh, my truest hope would be that this was actually double blind in that not only did the patients not know whether they had the aspirin or placebo, but the evaluator, the, the person talking to the patient after those three years did not know if the patient had had the treatment or placebo. So I hope this is double blind. So as I go through this, right, hopefully this experiment is double blind and the evaluator speaking with the patient also did not know if the patient received the aspirin or the placebo, right? So I've got this guy who's coming in after three years. So we'll call this one just for fun. Patient 47 comes in, right? And he's going to talk to an evaluator. And I hope that the patient doesn't know if he received the treatment or the placebo for the three years and the evaluator also doesn't know. So that the evaluator doesn't ask some kind of funky question like, oh, hey, I hope your placebo worked for three years. Did you have a heart attack? I don't want the evaluator to be able to bias the patient in any way. And this again, this does not mean nobody knows. There's somebody over in the lab, right? The lab tech that person over here knows patient 47 got the aspirin. All right, so somebody who's gonna crunch the numbers at the end will be able to say, okay, the guy that had the aspirin did have a heart attack or didn't have a heart attack, just depending on what that particular person says. All right, so you hope single blinding for sure, like that would be silly not to, but you really hope double blinding.